welcome to story time. Today we are going to be doing a folk tale of how the camel got its hump, which is a story by Rupert Kipling. Now there's lots of funny animals in creation. There is a giraffe with his really long neck, and there is the elephant with his really long trunk. Well, and there is a camel with a funny little hump on his back. So today we're going to figure out how the camel got that funny little hump on his back. Okay, so way, way back at the beginning of creation, there were only a few men and only a few animals. And well, they were busy, busy working to try to get the land ready for more animals and more people to move into. And well, in one plot of the desert, there lived a man, a dog, a horse, an ox, and a camel. Well, every day, the man, the horse, the ox, and the dog worked so hard. They would plow the fields, they would retrieve stuff, getting it ready for the rest of creation to move in. But you know that camel, he was just so lazy. He wouldn't help at all. In fact, whenever anybody said, help us, camel, you know what he would say? Hump. Can you say that? Hump. Hum. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> That's all the camel would say. Help us, camel. Hump. So whenever I say, what does the camel say? You say? Hump. Perfect. Okay, so the dog went up to the camel and said, Camel, it would be so nice if you would help me retrieve things. I'm carrying everything all by myself. The camel looks at the dog, and what do you think the camel says to that dog? Hump. Hump. No, he wasn't going to help the dog. And so the dog went back. And well, the horse, he comes up to the camel and he says, Camel, I carry things on my back all day and all night and I'm so tired and it would be so nice if you would simply help. Camel looks over at the horse and what do you think he says to that horse? Hump. Hump. I'm not going to help is what he's thinking. And so the horse trots away. Well, and then the ox, because the ox is big, and who's going to say no to an ox? <laughs> well, the ox, he goes over to the camel and he says, Oh my gosh, I've been plowing by myself for three days. Will you please help, camel? And well, you would think that camel would be intimidated by an ox, but he's not. Camel looks over at the ox, and what do you think camel says? Um. Um. He's not going to help the ox either. So all three animals, the dog, the horse, and the ox, go up to the man. And they say, man, I don't understand why nobody is helping. The camel is just simply sitting out in the desert all by himself, lazy as can be. Hump. He won't help. Hump. He won't help. And well, the man says, there's really nothing we can do. You can't make somebody work if they don't want to. So you guys are just going to have to continue to work even harder to make up for what the camel won't do. The well, animals don't like this at all. And so they call on the genie of the desert. And they say, Genie, Genie, come and help us. So Genie comes down and he talks to the dog, the horse, and the ox. He says, what's the matter? You're working so great to make creation ready for all the other animals and men to move in. I don't see what the problem is. And they say, well, how would you feel if one of us refused to work? I don't think I'd like that at all. Is one of you not working? And they say, well, there's a creature. He lives out all by himself. And he won't help. All he'll say when we say, come and help us, is hump. Well, Genie, he's pretty smart. And he knows that's the camel. Because a camel is pretty stubborn. So he says, okay, I'll go talk to camel. So the Genie, being magic and all, poofs up to the camel. Well, at this time the camel is admiring himself in a little pool of water. Thinking, oh, look at my long neck. Oh, look at my beautiful curly lashes. Pretty fond of himself. He's a pretty good looking creature. Well, Jeannie says, Camel, I'm hearing all these awful things about you that you won't help the others work. It's been three days since I sent you here to get the world ready for the rest of creation. Why are you not helping? And Camel looks at the genie, a little snotty face, and says, Hum. Hum. <laughs> well, the genie is kind of mad. I mean, he is the genie. Why is Camel having such an attitude? So he says, Okay, Camel. Okay, let's just shake it off. Go and help your friends, and I'll forget about this whole problem. Camel's still looking at himself in the pond, and he looks over at Jeannie, and Camel says, Hump. Well, he's still not going to listen to what Jeannie has to say. And so Jeannie's getting mad. I mean, he's Jeannie after all, so he's thinking, I'm going to listen to Jeannie. So he 
says, Kim, you tell me huh, one more time, I swear you're going to be fine. So go and work with your friends. Well, Camel says, what does Camel say to the genie? Huh, he's still not going to go and help. No. And so right when he says it, he's admiring himself from the pond. A big, huge hump grows in his back. Oh, oh no! <laughs> so the genie says, well now you have your very own hump. Well, Camel says, now I surely can't work. Who can work with a big hump on her back? Well, genie tells Camel, that hump can allow you to work for three days without ever needing food and without ever needing water. So now you have the opportunity to make up for those three days that you refuse to work with the rest of the animals. Okay, well, I still don't understand how I can work with this hump. I was so beautiful. Well, the genie says, I'll tell you what, if you can make up for those three days and show me that you have worked so hard, and if your attitude improves, I'll remove the hump. So the camel goes and works with the other animals. But he still doesn't work very hard. In fact, even today, the camel still has that hideous hump on his back because he never did make up for those three days at the beginning of creation. And he's still the laziest animal in the world. That is how the camel got his hump. The end. Oh.